I am a research fellow uh, from, uh, from Oxford University, UK. Uh, my research is uh, uh, reconstruction of permafrost history in Siberia. Uh, this research uh, funded by NERC, Natural Environment Research Council in UK. Uh, now, the principle of our work is uh, using stalagmites and stalactites, which are uh, known with collective name uh, speleothems, uh, cave deposits, uh, for paleoclimate reconstruction. Uh, what happens is that stalactites and stalagmites uh, cannot grow in caves uh, if, they are, uh, if caves are frozen, because stalactites and stalagmites need seeping uh, rain or snow melt water that uh, seeping through the cracks in the cave ceiling and uh, when they uh, uh, seep through the rock above the cave they uh, dissolve uh, calcium carbonate and then this uh, dissolved calcium carbonate uh, is uh, deposited in the cave in form of stalactites and stalagmites. Now if uh, the rock is frozen then this uh, process cannot happen because uh, because the water is frozen. Water cannot penetrate through the cave ceiling. Now the same uh, uh, process also uh, in in the desert. If uh, we have aridity, then also stalactites and stalagmites cannot grow. So if we find stalactites and stalagmites in permafrost area, then they are relict from warmer period in the past when water could seep into the cave. The same in the desert. If we find stalactites and stalagmites in the desert, they are relieved from a period when desert was much more humid than today. So uh, our research, uh, we decided, uh, this research was international effort. Uh, it, it's included uh, scientists from Oxford University in UK, from Institute of Earth Crust in Irkutsk, Russia, uh, from uh, uh, Mongolian uh, Institute of uh, Geography, uh, Ge Institute of Geography in uh, Mongolian Academy of Sciences in Ulaanbaatar, and uh, also uh, ETH uh, Zurich, uh, Switzerland. Um, uh, actually, uh, uh, ah, and uh, also Arabica Caving Club in Irkutsk, who helps us to find the caves in very in this very remote area. So uh, we actually uh, uh, worked on chain of six caves from latitude 60 in the north, on the boundary of continuous permafrost, to uh, uh, through area of Lake Baikal, which is much uh, warmer much more temperate uh, and has discontinuous permafrost. And uh, another three caves were in uh, Mongolian Gobi Desert in different locations. So we wanted also to find how desert responded to climatic changes in the past. Uh, our purpose was actually to find if the caves are located on north-south transect, we can see how the permafrost uh, boundary, the boundary of continuous permafrost, uh, migrated in time from uh, north to south and back uh, as a result uh, of changes in uh, global temperature. Now we, we know from other studies that uh, global temperature changes. Uh, for example, we have glacial and interglacial periods. Uh, glacial periods are very cold when glaciers formed, for example, over Europe or over North America. And uh, interglacial peri periods are warm. Some of them are warm like now, but some of them slightly warmer. And these slightly warmer periods we actually were interested in because they can show us what will happen if uh, we slightly warm above, above present day level. And uh, it can actually show us what will happen in near future. Uh, if we warm by, uh, let's say, one degree or something like this. So, after dating uh, 36 speleothems um, and um, actually uh, 111 layers 
in 36 uh, speleothem samples, we found a very interesting results. Uh, if we look on uh, temperate area near Lake Baikal, there we uh, the stalagmites and stalactites grew there every interglacial, uh, every warmest uh, episode of every interglacial. So we have uh, now stalagmites uh, growing in some caves there. Uh, we, for example, caves in, in discontinuous permafrost. We have uh, some dripping areas where stalagmites growing. And in other uh, areas where there is no drip because there is uh, some patches of permafrost uh, on the above the cave. So in these caves, in temperate area near Lake Baikal, we found that uh, stalagmites uh, are growing today and also grew every interglacial during the last half million years. So also uh, 120,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, uh, 300. 30,000 years ago and also 400,000 years ago. Now, in the north, northernmost cave, we found that only episode of growth that we found there was 400,000 years ago, period known as uh, marine isotopic uh, uh, stage 11, interglacial stage 11. Uh, now, uh, and later, in, uh, we had no growth in this northernmost cave. So, what happened, uh, with, uh, we uh, started to check what happened in stage uh, 11, uh, 400,000 uh, 400, years ago. Uh, what were global temperatures? Why it was, uh, why, temp why uh, permafrost? degraded in this northernmost cave. Sorry. It's okay. Northernmost cave, uh, where now we are uh, under continuous permafrost. No drip in the cave now. There is a lot of ice in the cave. And we have some speleothems, uh, some stalactites and small stalagmites, which are not growing now. So, and we found that uh, 400,000 years ago, we have one stalactite growing. Uh, there is layer of growth. So, uh, then uh, we started to check what happened. And we found that global temperature during this episode was one and a half degrees above present. So, this uh, means that during this period, uh, this one and a half degree warming compared to pre-industrial levels uh, caused uh, continuous permafrost uh, close to its boundary start to degrade, start to melt. And uh, uh, it means that uh, on uh, now uh, there was also one period 120,000 years ago when uh, the global climate uh, warmed by half degree to one degree, so less than in stage 11. But no growth occurred in this northernmost cave. So we probably were, uh, managed to put a finger on a threshold when exactly the continuous permafrost st starts to melt. Dr. Vox, probably, uh, when you yeah. say when you say warmer than present, do you mean uh, 2013 present, or or is there another definition no, of that? No, uh, actually, we mean uh, pre-industrial level. Now, pre-industrial level, it's uh, uh, 19th century and uh, most of the 20th century, because uh, warming between the beginning of industrial revolution and 1975 was very minor. Most of the warming occurred later, during the last 30, 35 years, right. actually, the last 40 years. So, uh, uh, it means uh, since 1975, we warmed by maybe uh, six tenths of degree or something like this, or right. seven tenths of degree. So, uh, but I mean uh, one and a half degree warming above a uh, level that was before then. Uh, the pre-industrial level. So we probably already <coughs> made half a way up uh, to this threshold. Now, uh, this, uh, it means uh, that uh, continuous permafrost near its boundary starts to thaw when we uh, uh, reach uh, this uh, 1.5 uh, 
uh, degree global warming. Now, interesting results. <coughs> the result was in Gobi Desert because this is only period when we have some uh, minor growth in the uh, of uh, spilotems in the Gobi Desert. We found that during stage 11, 400,000 years ago, we had some more uh, mild and more rainy conditions in the Gobi Desert. And some spilotems grew there. So, we can conclude then that uh, one and a half degree warming, or above one degree warming, is causing major change to Asian uh, climate. Both uh, the continuous permafrost in the north starts to degrade. And also, uh, Gobi Desert becomes uh, slightly more humid. So, uh, this what, uh, what it says, that uh, it, this is probably the tipping point, the one and a half degree warming. 